heard people say that Boko Haram has been technically defeated. And yet a technically defeated Boko Haram is killing soldiers in the northeast. What is going wrong with your fight against Boko Haram? Well, um, I think the best people that really answer that question are people from the northeast. Uh, that means um, Yobe, Borno, uh, Bochi, Adamawa. Uh, you see, when this administration came in, Boko Haram was holding 17 local governments in the northeast. They are not holding any local government now. So they have resorted, you know, to indoctrinating young people, especially girls, wrap them up with explosives and dispatch them to soft targets, churches, mosques, marketplaces, motor parks. But the best you can get about the performance of this administration vis-a-vis -vis stopping that um, um, Boko Haram occupation of Nigeria is when you visit my degree or beyond. Or, or beyond. Uh, people go back to the land they are farming, they go back to the office, they can drive from Meduguri to Kano virtually any time of the day, which wasn't happening when we came in. And uh, as I said, I still feel that you, the press, should do more research mm. and not just go in and stay in a hotel in Meduguri. Try to go to... Uh, try, Try to go to Munguno and talk to, to, to the people. But there's no doubt, though, that um, we've seen an increase in attacks against the military in particular by Boko Haram. Uh, in the last uh, six months, we've had two major military installations attacked and soldiers killed. Um, are you at all concerned with this focus or new focus that Boko Haram seems to have, which is basically targeting... Um, military targets and, and, and the success they've actually had in, in killing um, hundreds of soldiers in the last few months? Um, you see, thank goodness, uh, if you have uh, a background of military training, is that uh, when you don't fight any conventional war, now that uh, they are putting tactics of terrorists they choose their targets. They choose the time. They choose where to attack, at which time. Uh, with that, uh, you have to be highly mobile. You have to have very good communication. And we have resources uh, limitations. Because a lot of Nigerians don't feel that we are in an emergency. That the military needs a lot more money for equipment, a lot more money uh, you know, for spare parts, for communications, and so on. But Boko Haram, certainly, uh, they are being supported by forces outside Nigeria. Now, you talked about resources. I think uh, since coming into government, my total calculation is that you've spent something like, or you've budgeted, let me not use the word spend, you've budgeted something like 1.8 trillion for defense. And yet, that's the number I have. I might be wrong. That's wrong. <laughs> that's very wrong. <laughs> okay, we'll cross-check and make sure. But I was told one point. My research showed what over the last three years, I'm talking about three years, 1.8 trillion. Um, so not one budget recycle from 2015 to date. Yeah, 1.8 trillion. Um, and yet we have soldiers complaining about a lack of equipment. We have soldiers, you know, uh, last year we saw Meduguri Airport demonstration by soldiers who felt they were not being looked after. And, and so the question is really, as Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces, um, how much are you holding the leadership of the Army accountable, given the complaints we're getting from the rank and file about welfare? Um, I received weekly situation report from the military in the court. Um, uh, 
it's, it's extremely difficult, you know, to uh, to accuse, uh, you know, the soldiers of going to the extent of demonstrating. But the consequences of that now was well, that uh, the army command has to put investigation, court martial officers and the men for demonstrating because soldiers are not supposed to demonstrate. And then uh, the, the action the military is taking against in the front line, let me call it my uh, degree the front line or the nonsense, uh, is not uh, normally given to the press. Because on the trial, those who have been tried, if they are not found guilty, they are supposed to be reabsorbed and posted out. But those found guilty are sentenced by the court martial. And this is being done. Okay, so the, the concern though for ordinary Nigerians is that soldiers appear to be getting punished for being whistleblowers, for indicating that all is not well with the military hierarchy and that the military hierarchy is not spending the money that it is allocated um, on soldiers and their welfare. I, are you not concerned at all about that? Certainly I'm concerned um, where we get uh, officers who uh, uh, short-changing troops either misappropriating their Russian accounts or they are not paying them in time. But one of the things I did when I came back clearly and I got the governor of the central bank involved was that uh, as far north in the country, there are banks. And soldiers are allowed to open two accounts. One, where their families are, and make a written uh, allocation. And then they take the balance wherever they are. And that was being done. So we foresaw that because of the experience I had in my military service to make sure that uh, there is no longer pay on the table. Mm -hmm. So that pay masters cannot short change them. So you're not convinced that there's anything untoward going on with the, with the military budget. That's what it sounds like. That you're not convinced that there's a case to be answered by the hierarchy of the military. That's what it sounds like. Well, the system, um, I believe the system is still working. Otherwise, there would have been a complete breakdown. The system is working, but it's much more difficult. And don't forget, there are soldiers that think they should only wear a uniform to get the security, mainly the material security, salary, allowances, you know, and accommodation for the family. If you ask them to go to the front, they will put the gun down and disappear. Yeah, but, but, but isn't part of the problem is, is, is that um, not many people feel that Nigeria is a country they can now sacrifice for. People do not feel like no, Nigeria I, is looking after them and therefore they can no, look agree. after Nigeria. No, 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 that's not even fair. <laughs> Frankly, but you say that's not fair. No, no, that's not true. If you look at the sheer number of Nigerians, Nigerian troops that have died, have laid their lives on the line, and we just recently celebrated the Remembrance Day, the commitment of Nigerian troops to this country is unparalleled. There's no way to say any, 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 any suggestion at all that, that they are, that Nigerian troops are not prepared to lay down their lives for the country. It's Certainly not the case at all. And, and I think that's certainly the case for the majority, but we are also saying there are soldiers, if you go on social media, there are videos of soldiers complaining about the fact that they are not being looked after, that they don't have boots. And, um, <laughs> and that uh, the, the demonstration certainly in Meduguri was not something that journalists manufactured. This was soldiers protesting their terms of engagement. And so, so the question is, are there, are there things that are going wrong within the military and which this government, for whatever reason, seems really reluctant to investigate? Because we've not heard of anybody saying, this is enough concern for us to do something about it. No, no, but 
Frank, frankly, my, my, my take on that is that if, if there are issues, if, for example, they are assuming that there is any uh, misappropriation of government funds, there's a process, you know, there's a clear process for ensuring that that is not the case. And if, if people are found uh, responsible, we, we've had investigations on uh, military spending, and if people are found to be guilty of those things, they will, they will be prosecuted properly. I think that's it. Okay. Um, there's a, a, a ma matter.